Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pits of Motor Chaos. This is Dave. I got my nice special guest, tractor driver Cole Pritchett. How you doing, Cole? I'm pretty good. How you doing? Not bad. So, with the COVID and all going on this year, have you did you do a lot of drag racing? Did quite a bit. Uh, we didn't get started until about middle of May, but other than that, we done quite a bit. So, how many events did you run? Um, we ran almost every weekend from I guess middle of May till the weekend before Thanksgiving. I think we took probably one or two weekends off. So we still had a pretty jam packed schedule. So how'd you, how'd you do this year? How'd the jacks to run for you? I, it done pretty good. Uh, my my car, the the purple and maroon one, it done real well with it. But uh, it also broke an engine in it, broke a crank in it back uh, in August, and ended up running racing dads the majority of the year, anyways, and struggled with some fuel issues and got it figured out and uh, done really well with it also actually went a bunch of rounds in both of them won a race in each of them so no complaints to either one of them now the dragster runs on the alcohol right yeah now how much alcohol you put in there uh it's got a four gallon tank well it'll burn a little over a gallon a pass no, how, how many years have you been driving that dragster now? Uh, I've driven a big car. This is my 22nd year in the big car. I, I was first, uh, I think I turned 15. I was 15 and one week old when I made my first pass in the big car. Mm. All right, so let, let me re- rewind the uh, clock with you. And I ask you, Cole, how, how did you get into drag racing in the first place? Uh, the whole family's race. My dad's race. He started racing. He, Funny story on that is he started street racing at ten, on the a back alley of Tennessee Tech back in the 70s when he was going to school down there. Uh-huh. And uh, funny story is they actually got busted street racing down there. But that night he went in there because he actually went on a date when uh, with my mom then. That was one of their first dates. And it, it kept him from getting busted street racing. But he... Uh, He's always raced, um, run some super stock. He's run modified, top dragster, uh, quick rod, bracket raced. And then my uncle always run, he's worked his way up through stock, super stock, and comp eliminator. And then uh, my other uncle's bracket raced. So it's just kind of been, always been around it. So, but it's mostly your dad's fault that you got into drag racing? Yeah. So what what year did you start racing? Um, I started racing juniors when I was nine, so that would be if that would be ninety four, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four, right around in there. I started with juniors. I'd say it's probably ninety ninety two or ninety three, and then ninety five, got a new new junior. And kept it until I started running a big car at 15. So how'd, how'd you do in juniors? Did you do pretty good? Pretty good. Um, I, honestly, I feel like I'm a horrible bottom bowl racer, but back at that time, I done pretty decent in junior. Won, won a lot of races. So, and it, and it wasn't, wasn't by driving good on the tree. It was by driving good on the other end. So you went to the from the junior at 15 years old to the big dragster? Yeah, last pass I made in the junior, I was 14, and it was that October at, at Steel, Alabama at the bracket finals. I think one of my last passes, I went like 11 to 20 something in the junior. And back at that time, you, you know, if you had a junior that ran nine O's, you were flying. And uh, first pass in the big car, um, it was actually the first points race of the year. Went out there, never done burnout in or anything, done a burnout stage, and it went 558. I think. So, it, it was a little bit of a different experience. So, what what track did you license at for the dragster? Uh, at Crossville. It was his I-40 dragway then, now it's Crossville dragway. So, the, how, how, I know you were just talking about your uh, moving from the 
Junior to the big card. So tell us more about the experience. How how did it feel going on a track for the first time? Uh, it felt really good, especially in the big car. And that's the the one thing. The, the faster you go, it's always more of a fun experience. Uh, that's the the one thing. Doing a lot of bracket racing, you get used to staying close to the same ET all the time. But um, it's like this year, I've had both dragsters in a race, and I put a small block back in mine, and it left the line, and, and I felt like it wasn't moving. And it still went 515. But when you're used to going 470s and 480s, that's a big jump. So first, first pass in the big car definitely got my attention. So now what's the quickest pass you made with that dragster? Um, I've been 452 in, in my car with, uh, with actually the engine that's in my dad's car right now. Most of the time, mine, mine will run with, with my big block will run uh, high seventies, low eighties, and Dad's will run mid seventies, which is a pretty good place to be at bracket racing. Now, are you running quarter mile or eighth mile? Eighth mile. Yeah, have you ever done quarter mile? Oh yes, I, I love quarter mile. You, the the weird part when you go that extra eighth mile, it sure does sound a lot different. You start hearing noises you never think about. <laughs> So what's your preference? Now what? What's your preference, quarter or eighth? Uh, I like eighth mile, but I, I miss quarter mile racing. I mean, we done quite a bit of that back in the early 2000s, and quarter mile's fun. Going that much faster is fun, but it also, it, it, it's a lot easier on stuff running an eighth mile. So now, Cole, what, what do you enjoy most about being a drag racer? Um, just <laughs> being around all the friends at the track, I like, uh, it, it's fun working on everything. And that's the big challenge with what we do is you're not going out there and trying to go fast, but you're trying to get something to repeat every pass. And sometimes that can be a struggle. And that, and just the, the whole tuning part, part of it is what I enjoy. No, is there anything that you hate about being a drag racer? Um, driving to the track and having to work on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hate working on something at the track, and it never fails. That's about where I work on all the stuff at. It don't matter, don't matter what you do during the week, you're going to break something with the races sooner or later. So now, after all the years of racing, now what what still keeps you passionate about doing it? Just the challenge of winning. I mean, it's, every year it gets harder to win. Um, I mean, I, I remember when I first started running a big car, and if you could be 30 on the street and one over, you were going to go a lot of rounds. And now, if you're not in total, it's hard to win rounds. I mean, uh, just this past year, one of the, the older guys that uh, bracket races with us locally, he we rolled out there, and I think I was 15 total on him, and I shouldn't even pull in the water box. I think he was one total on me in the other lane. So, stuff like that can go on. It's, it's a challenge. Hey man, you gotta cut a good light. You gotta cut a good light and have a car that repeats, and that's, that gets rough to do. But, I, I can't be as good as I used to be, though. Now, if you could have the drag racing fans remember one thing about you, Cole, what would you want that one thing that the fans will remember about you? Just that the most of the time, no matter what happens, I'm happy at the track. 99% of the time at the track, you're going to see me with a smile. It don't matter, don't matter if good or bad happens, I'm going to be there smiling. Because I'm just glad to be there. Yeah, that's good. So it's always always a blessing to be there. So now, what what kind of advice would you give the up and coming uh, you know young young kids that maybe want to start drag racing? What kind of advice do you have? Um, stick with it. Don't don't be afraid to ask somebody advice or ask for help at the track. There's always going to be somebody there that's going to be willing to help show you what to do. Um, 
and, and the biggest thing is go up there and watch. Pay attention to what's going on on the starting line. Pay attention to what guys are doing at the finish line. That's the biggest thing. You know, what biggest thing is watch and learn and practice. Make as many laps as you can. So do you think you could become a better driver? And if so, how, how do you how do you achieve that? Become a better driver, Cole. I always think I can can be a better driver, and, and a lot of that's just practice, going back on on that and seeing what happens. Um, I hate to say it, it's 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 amazing how much bracket racing changed. That uh, that's of course the first one we've had that's got a race pack in it, and just the knowledge that you can find in there as far as if something's wrong with the car or what it's done, what it likes and what it don't like. And that's the biggest thing I'm working on now to make me a better driver is to work on making the car better. Now, is your family still involved with your drag racing? Oh, yes. Uh, Dad helps me in the shop. He don't race as much as what he used to. He'll race uh, a couple times a year. Um, he's got a Opal GT two chassis car that we're actually going to do some updates on this winter. Uh, it's uh, I went I went five forty four in it back in the summer at one hundred twenty eight and eight, uh, and it's a stock wheel base Opal GT it, and it drives like a Cadillac. Uh, but I mean, he Dad helps me a lot. My uncle Larry and his son in law they've got a machine shop and they do the majority of our engine work. Um, always fun getting getting heckled by my uncle because he wants. Top of laminator, it's always about going fast. In bracket race, you want something very reliable, and you've got to work, uh, work kind of a happy medium there. But uh, my wife, she always helps me out. My father-in-law, he does. He's got a uh, fabrication shop. He does a lot of little odds and ends things for us for the race cars. So it's it's a pretty good family effort. So are you looking to make any changes to the car for next year? Um. Well, yes and no. I've got my my five ninety eight apart right now. Going to try getting it fixed and put back in the car sometime at the first of the year. The the Opal is going to get a new engine. That's the four hundred six that we've had sitting there for Lord probably ten years, ready to go back together and not worked on it yet. We're going to put it in there, and uh, other than that, tires and start them up in the spring i mean right now we've got three cars sitting there that's ready to go so it's kind of hard to mess with anything on them no, you, but, go, go ahead I, I always want to do something to try to work on them and improve them so that, that's the big thing so do you have any kids yep yep i got four kids uh oldest is 15 and he's he's wanting to start racing and uh, I got a daughter that uh, love her to death. She could care less about racing. And then my my youngest, uh, there. My youngest one is three, and and he is eight up with racing. He'll get his Hot Wheels out and race them. And then my next youngest, he's eight, and he is getting ready for a junior. But I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm ready for it. <laughs> wow! You can have three three boys racing. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a handful. It might not be time for me to race then. Yeah, yeah. You have to take them out all the time, trip that to the tracks and race. Yep. But it'd be worth it. I mean, I, I, that's what I've always told everybody when I was younger. Be racing. It kept me out of trouble. Yep. So that's, that's my biggest thing. I, I think it's good for you to be involved in the sport. So it's uh, I, it, it's always good. And that's, that's the biggest thing is I'm, it's hard when we're at the track, especially running just a, a, a local bracket race, to go watch juniors run. But I always try at least watching them make time runs or something just to let them know that, that hey, one of the drivers that drives a big car is up here watching Right. And I think it, it helps them out. Now, when you go up to the track for a day of racing, uh, who who are your crew members that you bring with you? Um, usually it'd be me and the wife. Um, 
But now, uh, when we race locally, uh, Knoxville is one of our local tracks, and she actually works at the track. So it, most of the time when I'm at the track by myself, it's good when we get a weekend away to go somewhere, because um, it's good to have her there actually helping. But uh, she works at the track, and, and this last year is the first year she actually took off. She started a 470 door car index series a few years ago, and it's gotten pretty big, and she's got some partners involved in it now, and uh, it's looking to be pretty big, and they're actually going to do a 450 Dragster Index this year also, and uh, maybe try running some of that also. Nice. So now, did so you, we, go ahead, go ahead. We, we stay pretty busy whether we're at the track or at home, because... Uh, Depending on what's going on with the track, we're usually pretty busy during the week helping with track stuff also. So when you're not drag racing, you're busy with drag racing stuff? Yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> we get, uh, most of the time, about November and uh, January off, and maybe February, because most of the time in December you're either working on the schedule or working on sponsors or... Uh, um, an odd year this year not going to PRI but most of the time in December you're going to PRI so to try working on connections seeing people that you know so now when you first got into drag racing did you have any uh, drag racers out there that you know looked up to or insp- inspirational to you I've always looked up to my dad and my uncle um, just, just for what they've done um my dad, for years, he was one of the top ones actually in the area racing. Um, my uncle's always been really good. Whether you run Super Stock or now, now Comp Eliminator, um, so I always looked up to them. And then growing up, Jason Lance was always one that I looked up to. Because it never seemed, never felt whatever he drove, he done good in. So that, that's probably my top three right there. Now, how about in like the the big show, the NHRA, any 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 NHRA drivers that you looked up to? Um, there's a few. Um, over the years, I always one of my big ones I always liked was Warren Johnson, and it was a lot of it wasn't for his driving ability, but it's for what he would do off the track and how he would constantly work to make his program better. All right. Now, do you, do you have any local? You have any local sponsors at all for yourself? No, um, yeah, we got a, got a few to help get going down the road. We got uh, Red for Talky Carbs, Mid South Race Engines, BTE, Box Pro Fab, Newbert Racing Fabrication, Excess Power Batteries, and DJ's Performance. They uh, they can't help keep the wheels turning pretty good. I know. And if it, it, it wasn't for them, it, it, it'd be tougher to go racing. <laughs> yeah, every little sponsor helps out. That's it. They're always good. And, uh, I mean, especially Joe, uh, on the carburetors, he, it don't matter. I, I, can, I can call and aggravate him, but whenever I need help, it don't matter. He's always willing to help. Um, he, he's helped me a long ways. As far as racing, as far as carburetors goes. Now, when you're out there, when you get out there on the on the line, the starting line, do you have any pre-race rituals or superstitions out there? I, I got one even before I get on the start line. You'll never see me get in the car from the left, from the right side. I always get in the car from the left side. I got to think about that the other night. <laughs> I think every time I've stepped in the, the dragster from the right side, I've never went around. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if that just comes from being right-handed and getting in the car the one way or, or what, but it just it throws me completely off. Uh, other than that, it, it's just a lot of repetition. And that's, that's probably the biggest ritual I have, though, as you'll see me get in the car like that. I mean, I, I've got, I've got ways now in the drag sure I'll buckle the, the lap belts in the cam lock first and then start getting stuff ready. Then when I get closer to the head of the lanes, put the shoulder, shoulder harness on and click them in. And, and one of the last things I do is 
I'll hook my armor strength up and then put my gloves on. But so now, Cole, Cole, is there a lot of uh, preparation to getting the dragster ready for a weekend? Um, some weekends there is, some weekends there's not. About every three weeks, we'll just go in it. Um, you'll check the right pads. Um, depending on which end it is, you'll you'll run the valves. That car, I tend to run the valves about every other weekend on it. Just it's a big chief engine, and I, I don't know what it is, but it never fails. That it's not the most reliable valve flash wise, but uh, just check the valves and make sure everything's good. Uh, normally, you're taking fuel jugs out of the trailer, pumping alcohol out, and just getting everything, all the hot ends ready for the week. All right, now, what are what are some of your favorite tracks to race on? Um, probably one of my absolute most favorite tracks is Bowling Green. I've not been up there in a few years, but it's always been one of my favorites. Um, we're blessed right here where we're at. Um, we've got Knoxville, Crossville, Brainerd, and London right here pretty much within an hour and a half drive, which is the one you want to go to. And they're all very good tracks. It's, it's great having something that close. we got Bristol. It's just a little around an hour and a half away also. So uh, where we're at, we're blessed with a lot of good tracks. It's hard to just pick one out of the bunch. Now, where do, where do you get all your uh, fire safety equipment from? Um, most of it is RJS. Um, they've been really good to me. Um, I have no complaints with them. Went through a deal, uh, actually, two years ago at PRI. I, I bought a new jacket for this, the first of... 18, and I wore it two weekends and the zipper messed up, and they actually said, send it back, and we're sending it where, they sent me a new jacket and sent me a return. I actually took care of all the shipping, sent me a new jacket, and then at the end of 18, I decided I wanted to put armor strength on the jacket, and actually had my wife take it to PRI that year, I was unable, unable to go, and uh, actually ended up losing it. Wow. And then, then uh, it went around for uh, probably a month or so, and, and they sent me another one, which was a single layer one. So then they ended up sending me the right jacket with, with the arm strength, a brand new one, and uh, sent the other one back. And it was about two weeks later, I got a hand, handwritten note in the, the mail because my old jacket actually had some Sparco armor strength that's tack sewed on it. Uh huh. And it had actually the Sparco armor strength in the envelope and a handwritten note. We're sorry we had lost this, lost your jacket and we just now found it. Hmm. Oh, I, I, it's hard to, hard to say anything bad about them. They took good care of me. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. They, they definitely went above and beyond. And I mean, you got a lot of that music. There's a lot that would probably just say, hey, it, it's lost. Sorry. Yeah. They went out of their way. Yep. All right. So now, what what uh, what milestones have you reached in your drag racing career so far, Cole? Oh well, um, we've been a track champion between bracket racing and index racing. I think it's ten or twelve times. I've actually lost count. Um, the, the odd thing is, since I went back to just bracket racing full time in, in 2015, before that I'd went done a lot of index racing. But since I was 15, and since 2015, I've, I've either won the track championship, finished second or third every year since then. Um, the only thing is, three of them years I finished second to my best friend. And then, uh, in 15, we actually come up the last race of the year and ended up tying, and I lost on a tiebreaker. Um, but just just been I've been been blessed on that part. Uh, before before 15, we done uh, I guess it's 2011, 12, 13, and 14. We done a, a lot of six flight index racing and done really good with it too. And still try around some six flight stuff. Every now and then, six flight in index eight mile door cart racing. 
the biggest thing, the reason I quit running in is it, it, it was hard to travel an hour and a half or two hours to run in for what the local track paid the bracket race when it's 20 minutes down the road. But, um, that's some of my, my biggest accomplishments. Um, I actually went to the ISR World Finals in, in 2019 uh, and done pretty decent down there. Um, I was blessed enough this, this last year to go to the SFG 1.1 million race at Martin, Michigan. Uh, didn't win a round up there, but it was fun going up there. Um, we went up there for the whole, for, for the weekend, and when I got beat on Friday and, and didn't win the, the re-entry round, I told the wife, I said, well, we got two options. I said, we can stay here and wait to get in the, the – uh, gambler's entry for the, the 32 that they're going to run back off to re-enter or we can load up and, and go back go back towards home and run at London on Saturday night and London was having a 5,000 win race and then went down there and I don't remember if it's 5 cars or 7 cars or what it was that I got down to but we rolled in the gates at London about 9 o'clock at Saturday morning and I was four plumb out I ran I was afraid to take a nap, but um, it, it, it gets the older you get, the more you realize when you're younger and you and and dad was driving, and most of the driving traveling around, it, it's a it's a big relief having somebody else drive around for you. <laughs> yeah. So now, so so Cole, have you had any uh, accidents or close calls in your racing career so far? We, we've had some, we've had some, uh, actually the funny one was, uh, I actually shared the video back to Facebook page, my Facebook page this week, because my buddy had shared it again, but it was from, uh, I think it was 2017 when he was at Huntsville at the 50 Grander, and they postponed it from, I think it was supposed to be the middle of November, and they postponed it to the first weekend of December, first or second weekend of December, and, uh, it was one of those deals. It was it was cold. The track was good as long as you stayed in the groove. But if you got over in the the shiny, it wasn't too good. And we had uh, we was actually in the split round, the round when we split the uh, fifty grander up, and uh, I got actually flipped out of the left lane and put in the right lane. And when I left the line, I let go, and the car went a little right. It kept going right, getting over in the shiny towards the wall, and I kept turning the wheel. And when it started chattering the tires, I got on the knife or so on the ride. And when it finally got too close to the wall, I just whipped the throttle real quick and never realized I never let off the override button. So when I got back in the throttle, it came all the way back around and come across the track. But we've had some close calls like that. Um, funny thing, I've always said that one day I'm going to take out the 330 cone because <laughs> on an eighth, on eighth mile track, the only cone I've not hit has been the 330 cone. We've we took out the, the long layer finish line cones and the dragster. We, uh, I've run over the 60 foot. It, it wasn't, wasn't even a cone. It was still the old photo sales at Crossville one night. We were just uh, qualifying for a six flat race. And my old, my first door car, it was a Mustang. And, and I'd done the burnout in the back of the oil pan split open and filled the diaper up. And this car, it, it would leave with the front wheels be high. And it left. And as soon as it got the front wheels up, it just turned dead right and run over the podium sails. And what it done is it had pumped all the oil out of the pan into the diaper and went up the front wheels up. It had just got just enough underneath the tire to where it turned back in, turned the car around. <laughs> but we've done two or three things. I've left the, my mom's in before I sold it. I guess it was back in uh, second or third race I ever run with it. I left the fuel cell with it off of it, and it was on the front. And I had the car up over, on, on almost on the side when it got an alcohol. But we, we've had some close calls. We've not wrecked anything yet. Well, knock, knock on wood, you won't get any uh, bad wrecks. <laughs> knock on wood. That, that's the biggest thing. Uh, but sitting here, uh, if I bring this up, I might get whooped. But uh, years ago at the, at the bracket finals, this was... 
I mean, it's 2015. It's the first year I went back to this bracket race, and I actually, on that Friday night, the gambler's race, I actually had to run with my buddies in the, the finals. And um, I always, <laughs> I got to be like Babe Ruth, I called my shot on it. I told him, I said, look, I said, I'm going to be six or better. I said, because I know you're going to be seven at least total. And he was laughing about it. His wife was sitting there, you know, she she said, Bridget said, yeah, yeah, we, we know, we know. Well, <laughs> come back around, I got, I won, I got the ticket. I'm double O one, dead one. <laughs> and uh, Brian, he was, he was double O two, dead four. <laughs> he, and he was looking at me, he said, boy, you, you did know that. And I said, Look, I said, I know when, when me and you's both on, I said, it's going to be a heck of a run. And I said, that's what we had. But one of the few times I called my shot racing. Wow. The, the, the only other time I can, can remember doing that, we had a uh, uh, Blues Index racing at Brainerd and uh, Brainerd Optimus uh, down around down Chattanooga. And uh, I had to buy run five cars. And six flat. I told my wife, I said, look, I said, I'm, I said, I've been good tonight. I said, the car's been good. I said, if it's green, I said, I'm going to be happy. Because I said, uh, she said, what are you setting up for? I said, I'm setting up to be triple zero on the tree and dead zero. She, she said, I'm going to buy her. And I said, yeah. I said, no, no better time to do it. <laughs> and I let go and it was green. And I went through the finish line. I looked at the scoreboard and it said six flat. And Brainerd, it's probably, it, it's a long ways back to get to the, where the key shack is. And I got to slip, and I looked at it, and I'm triple zero. And I was like, well, I said, all right. I'm, I finally got to work. I see, I went six flat with the zero. And I said, well, I said, that's good. I said, I had my first perfect run, but I wasted it on a bye run. <laughs> but we come back the next round um, at three cars. The the one boy want, was wanting to split. And I said, I told him, you have to talk to the bye car. I said, because it, it's not fair to split, do anything at three. It's, uh, I said, especially when somebody's on the bye and uh, but I told the boy, I said, look, I said, whatever we do, I said, I want the left lane when we go back up there. I said, so I got lane choice. And he, he kind of, he, he talked his shoulders back. He said, well, how do you know you got lane choice? I said, well, it's triple zero on the tree. And he said, well, how do you know they're not going off the index? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm a dead zero. I said, I had a perfect run. I said, if you can do better than a perfect run, I said, you can have whichever lane you want. <laughs> but uh, we didn't even get to run at three. You ended up running out that night. But uh, just, just I, I have fun racing. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, right, that's good. <laughs> All right, so now, Cole, I'm going to ask you a few fun questions. There, Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. You probably don't even have no no time for time for what I'm going to ask you, but because you're always busy with drag racing, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Out, outside of drag racing, do you have any other hobbies? Uh, well, this, this is going to be a funny one. Uh, Playing on door slammers too on the phone. Um, <laughs> I, I, everybody like my wife gets mad at me. They started a uh, stock super steel on there, and they run stock one night, super stock the next night with indexes, horsepower factors, and all that. And I've really got into that. We we run one stock race and one super stock race on the points series this winter, and uh, really get into that. Um, I want to get into slot car racing. My wife's probably going to kill me over that one. <laughs> but uh, other than that, riding dirt bikes and just, just tinkering around in the garage. All right. Now, do you have a greatest competitor in drag racing? Uh, I've actually got two. Um, Travis Nelson, he's, he's one of my best friends. Uh, it, it never fails whenever we run. It's going to be a good race, and one of us usually makes the other one look like an idiot, and usually that's him making me look like an idiot. And then the other one is is another one of my friends, Keith Thomas. Uh, uh, his papa's the one that actually runs the track at Knoxville, uh, but it never fails. Whenever I run Keith, if I'm eight total, he's going to be seven total, and it it never fails. We uh, I don't know how many times we run. But I swear, I think I've only ever beat him twice. Um, that, that's probably the, the two, my two favorite ones to run. There's there's some more, but that, that's my two favorite ones. And, and what's bad is they're, they're two of my best friends. 
Yeah, so with them, it's like you get to the starting line, you you do your worst enemy until you get down to the the end. Then you're then your best friends again. <laughs> That's what I, I tell them. I, I look at my I, I'll tell them right to the face. I said, look, I'm tipsy, right? And catch on fire. I said, until we until we get to the finish line, I said, I don't care what happens over in that lane with you. I said, if we get to the finish line, you, you don't see you beside me. I said, I will turn around and help you. Um, which which that goes back to another story with Keith. Uh, Keith's a big boy. He's six two, six three, three hundred fifty, four hundred pounds. I mean, he he's a big boy. He's got a uh, uh, actually it's a pro mod style. Chrome Molly still body Camaro, uh, 68 model. And we was at Memphis uh, last year at the practice finals, and uh, he, on that, I think it's Thursday night on the gambler's race, he was at, at three cars, and uh, it was running another one of the boys that, that races locally with us, and, and that boy red-lighted on him, and Keith, Keith left second. And he goes out there, and the car gets out of the groove and comes across the track and rolls. And he's upside down. And uh, we, we was all up there by the start line because Keith's brother just won juniors that night. They were run, won a runner up in juniors that night. And uh, but we, we'd been up there in the winter circle picture. And, and uh, Keith's uncle was driving the golf cart down the, the access road beside the track there. And... He he piles off the golf cart and I'm right behind him, and I see TJ going to try helping Keith get out. I turn the power off and and Keith. By the time TJ reached for the door handle to open it for Keith, Keith kicked the door open and about laid TJ out on the ground getting out of the car. But I said I've never seen somebody that big move that fast to get out of a car. <laughs> but yeah, wow. But that, that was one. I, I went running, so I, I was. I was there first. There's second to make sure he's okay. <laughs> All right, now let's see. Next question is: if you, if you were able to, if you were able to hit a time travel machine, call and go back in the time, would you do anything differently with the drag racing? Um, no, I, I don't think I would. I mean, it, it's been too much of an adventure going the the route that, that I have. Um, now, if we could take a time machine back and, and let me be a different age and a different time, I, I would love to go back to the mid to late 80s and run IHRA stuff back then. The mid mid to late 80s, early 90s, back when IHRA was really in its heyday. All right. Now, if you and your family have time to go on a vacation, do you have a favorite vacation getaway? Um, most of the time, it's... it's Going just down the road to uh, Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. Uh, vacations tend to be uh, few and far between. Me and the, uh, I mean, that, that was the whole trip to Michigan this year. It was me and the wife got away, and it was just us. So, uh, a lot of times, vacation ends up racing. Now, as far as the sport of drag racing goes, do you have anything on a bucket list that you'd like to try in drag racing still? I'd like to be able to, to go to some more big bracket events. Um, don't know how that's going to work out, but that would be the biggest thing. I, I'd love to end up winning a million one day, but um, that, that's something in the future I'd like to do. All right, what, what's your favorite food? Favorite foods? Uh, Mexican or Chinese. Does your wife cook? Yeah. What's your favorite yeah, she, favorite dish that she, she makes? I, I like when she makes tacos. All right, favorite beverage? Um, well, you used to be Diet Mountain Dew, but now it's, now it's great for pale. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Um, Days of Thunder. You got to go with the classic on that one. Oh, yeah. Favorite music? Um... Either classic rock or Christian music. When you were a little kid, what was your favorite cartoon to watch? Um, either Tom and Jerry or um, Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's really about all we had back then. <laughs> well, those are the classics. 
Now, when you're at the track for a day of racing, how, how's your eating habits, Cole? You, you eat lightly and wait till the races are done, or do you eat regularly? Uh, most time I'll eat a, uh, a big breakfast and won't eat anything hardly. Uh, I'll eat some saltine crackers or something until I get beat. All right. Uh, most, embar- most embarrassing moment on this track. <laughs> which one? <laughs> which, one's, uh, st- which one stands out the most for you? Uh, I probably have to take the time that uh, I was at, at three cars in the uh, six flat race and the uh, radiator fell off the car. Radiator cap fell off the car. Or, uh, I don't know, either that or the time the cool wire fire, uh, fell off on the burnout. Uh, <laughs> that, that or, or uh, I was at Rockingham in 04 running the Quick Rod and, at the Fall Nationals and. Um, we, uh, we we had the last time call for quick rod, and then we've come back up about thirty minutes later around the first round of the XL shootout, and uh, done the burnout. The car quit. They start pushing me back, and I hear something dra- dragging the ground, and uh, the crank trigger eye fell off the car. So about about all of my embarrassing moments uh, come with the fact that it, it was lack of maintenance. Well, you learn from your mistakes, Cole. That's it. <laughs> Life's a learning experience all the time. That's what exactly is. Yep. So now, what, what would you consider to be the fondest memory of your drag racing career? Um, uh, and it, it, well, it actually goes back to not even me racing. Um, it had to be back in 1989 when Dad won the... the World bracket finals. Uh, that's probably the, the biggest memory I have. Uh, that and when I won the the points meet in one and got, uh, in one when I got runner up at the bracket finals too. Uh, that, that's probably the three biggest memories I got. Um, uh, Eighty nine when Dad won. Uh, that's back when all the tracks went to the bracket finals, and uh, so you had fifty something tracks there. And uh, he won the bracket finals that year. And then, uh, actually, you know, when I, I got runner-up, uh, I had two perfect lights and, and eliminations at the main race. So that's, that's probably the, the biggest memories. Nice. So now, if people want to follow you where you're going to be racing at next year, what's the best way for people to follow you to see where you're going to be at? Um, my Facebook page, um you know, it's Cole Pritchett on Facebook. Um, I'm probably going to try starting the racing page up when I get time this winter. Uh, make it a little bit easier mm-hmm. for everybody to find me. All right. So, Cole, you have any final words? Um, just want to thank everybody. Thank my family, my wife, my dad, uh, for everything. Thank God for blessing me uh, and helping me be able to race. Uh, just enjoying it man that's the biggest thing awesome well i want to thank you very much for uh being on here today cole thank you thank you for having me hope you had fun i did and we'll, we'll do another one in the future hopefully we'll talk about some big wins with that dragster that sounds like a good plan i like that one and uh you you have a great night and uh you know thanks again and i wish you the best luck with the 2021 drag racing season Thank you. And I, I probably won't talk to you until have a Merry Christmas and all that, Happy New Year and all that good stuff. You, you have a good Christmas, good New Year. Uh, in, uh, enjoy the off season a little bit here. All right, Cole. Well, thanks again. All right, thank you. All right. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.